Don't be afraid to do it yourself. Get your hands a little dirty, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, I guess I should do that all again, but with this light on. Oh, hi crafters, didn't see you there. Welcome back to another episode of Crafting with Daniel. I'm your host, Danny Crafts, and this week we are making this amazing DIY wooden sound diffuser. If you haven't already, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and that little bell icon so you never miss a video. Awesome. Now that that's out of the way, let's dive on in to this amazing tutorial. Now I've actually sped all of this up, so it looks like I did it really fast, but it actually took me about two weeks. If I, you know, sat down and really cranked it out, put all my energy in, could have taken one to two days. You guys know how procrastination works and all that. Great. So if you don't know what a sound diffuser is, you should definitely Google it. They're usually made with like wood blocks and they look a lot more like but you know, I just used some aspen tree branches that I found in my house. This is an aspen. You can tell that it's an aspen tree because of the way it is. Wow. Right, so we're just gonna dive on in here. You're gonna clamp your wood up. Turns out I used the wrong <laughs> table. You really wanna use a stable sawhorse. And I realized I also haven't really cut wood since uh, I took wood shop in high school. So I had <laughs> quite a bit of trouble. Definitely learned a lot. I kept going back and forth between the handsaw and the power saw. Yep, oh, there we go. Also, make sure you wear goggles when you do this because it gets kind of dusty. I have a wobbly sawhorse. A pro tip would be to have a stable sawhorse. Saw dust getting in my eyes. It was a learning process, really. Don't know why I went back to the handsaw here. But yeah, this, this is when I really get into my groove. And then after you're done there, you just want to sweep it up, clean off your wood and bring it inside. Okay, step two is gluing your wood. So laying out all your pieces on your wood board, evenly spread out really helps. Wanted to mix up the size of the pieces I was using to make the, uh, the final product look a bit more dynamic. So I used wood glue, then when I ran out, I used hot glue, uh, which both work fine. And once your board is filled, you can go in with smaller pieces to really fill, fill in just all the little nooks and crannies, yeah. Wow, look at that. So after you're finished filling in your board, you can go over it with anything, paint, resin, pom-poms, marijuana, whatever really. I chose this gloss varnish that is for spraying over paintings. So I just spray that over. Definitely don't do this inside your house. It filled the entire house up with petroleum, but it like it did do make the wood a bit darker. And I like to think it killed any like little bugs or anything still living in there. Once you have nearly choked to death on that varnish spray, oh sorry, on that petroleum, leave your board to dry for at least 24 hours. I went to Home Depot and there was no one to cut the wood, so I had to cut it myself. Then I got my wood glue here, my Gorilla Glue, and then I just went over it with Gorilla Glue. Started with a pattern, but then kind of just went all over. You can find gor Gorilla Glue in your house. I bought mine from Home Depot, I believe. At first I thought it was good to avoid the edges because I didn't want it to seep too far over, but I kind of went so far from the edges that the corners kind of peeled up a little. Oh, here's me having fun with my clamps. <laughs> that's me in my pajamas. I have Riverdale pajamas. Oh, costume change. Once that's nice and dry, it's ready to hang. So I just measured that out on the wall and then made sure it was centered on the board so I knew where to screw in my holes correctly. Kind of had some trouble screwing in the nails because it's fresh wood. And you just wanna make sure that your hanging materials are screwed in firmly so that your piece does not fall off the wall. And you know, it's heavier than it looks, so I did perspire a little bit when hanging it. So I would advise perhaps doing this with a friend, but you can do this by yourself, no problem, really. I checked with the level after and it was level. I think my roof is just caving in a little bit, but it was easy peasy lemon squeezy. <laughs> hey, you know what? If I could figure this out, then so can you guys. And there you have it, just a, a beautiful, uh, you know, accent piece for a new apartment, an old apartment, 
just space, spacing up an old space, adding a natural element, and apparently it works as a sound diffuser, but don't quote me on that. I can't tell. I don't really make a lot of noise down here anyway, so I just kind of like that how it looks. It's kind of pretty. <laughs> Well, folks, that's pretty much how you do it. If you have any DIY suggestions, please... If you have any DIY suggestions, please comment them below. And uh, I probably won't do them, but it'll be nice to see what your ideas are. But yeah, we'll see you next time on Crafting with Daniel. Thank you so much.